my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my August TBR and you may be wondering, it's pretty much the end of August when I'm posting this? Yes, it is. I moved in the beginning of August and life was crazy but now that I'm settled in, I am literally in such a reading mood and this is the first like time that I've had to post a TBR and I just want to. It's been so, so long since I posted one and I just, I feel like it. So this is what I'm going to be trying to read in the end of August and I actually feel like I have a good chance of getting through it because I've just been in such the reading mood lately. I'm reading at a pace that I've not read at in months and I will be talking about some of the books that I already read, but it's only like two of them that I already read, but like now I'm just in the mood. So I'm just gonna talk about what I feel like reading the rest of August and yeah, it's late, but you know what? We're always reading books and we're always talking about books that we wanna read. So it is what it is, it's fine. The first book that I'm going to talk about is Majesty, which is the sequel to American Royals. So I read American Royals last year via audiobook and I loved it. It basically follows the American royal family, the Washingtons, aka it's what would happen if the founding fathers of the country decided to make George Washington a king instead of a president that stepped out. And so we have the Washington royal family and they are his descendants and it talks about basically their drama. It's not very heavy on the politics. I mean, it is kind of cool to see like what would have happened to America if it was a monarchy and like how we would function as a country if we were a monarchy, but it's not really speculative in that way and it doesn't go too deep into the politics, but you do kind of see it. It's more of a different setting for some like fun, drama and it's so fun. We have the three characters that are the three Washington children. So we have Beatrice who is next in line for the throne. She is also the first like female heir and she basically like falls for someone that she shouldn't as the heir. And then we follow Sam who is the spare and she kind of lives in Beatrice's shadow and so she tries and like acts out to get attention and she's kind of reckless and known as a partying princess. And then we have Jeff who is Sam's twin. He's basically like this heartthrob and like everyone wants to be with him and he has these two girls that are kind of vying for his attention which are the two other side characters that we follow. Daphne who's basically kind of like a gold digger like she just wants to be part of the American royal family. And then we have Nina who is their commoner best friend they grew up with and yeah he's kind of torn in between these two women and these two women are sort of like at war over him so it's really entertaining and the second book takes place after the cliffhanger ending of the first book and the drama just picks up and it's very interesting because the love interest kind of gets flipped around and you follow, continue following along with these different characters as they go along their journeys um and it takes place there's about a six week time jump between the end of american royals and majesty so yeah i think it was just more of the same fun but changes up in a way that but it's also changed up in a way that's really fun. And I'm trying not to give reviews here. So I'm like trying to be like, wait, how do I describe this book if I hadn't already read it? And the next book that I read is also a sequel and a really anticipated sequel of mine. And that is Faceless Hawk by Margaret Owen. And this is the sequel to The Merciful Crow. So The Merciful Crow follows Fi who lives in this world that's divided into this caste system and every caste has a particular power. The phoenixes are rulers and they have this fire power and the crows like mandate in life is they don't have a birthright and they just go around and they deal mercy to people that catch what is known as the sinner's plague. So you may wonder, why am I reading a book about the plague in the middle of a pandemic? But you know what, it, it was okay. <laughs> yeah, this was just really interesting because Fi is such a headstrong character and what happens in this one is the crown prince and his body double slash bodyguard, Tavin, fake their own deaths via the plague and then Fi has to Hello? Whew. Okay, I just had to run to pick up a package. I don't even remember where I finished in my description of the Merciful Crow. <laughs> but anyways, so there is some... So basically, like, Fi and her band are responsible for getting the prince back on the throne after he faked his own death via the plague. So now the tagline of the Faithless Hawk is kings become outcasts and lovers become foes in the thrilling sequel to Mark Owens' The Merciful Crow. So basically now that it's the second book, and I'm not going to spoil too much about the first book, but Fi is just hopeful that the prince will fulfill his oath to the crows that he made in the first one. Queen that initially was trying to assassinate Prince Jasmine, which is why he faked his own death, is now up to more shenanigans, and she's trying to use the pl 
plague and the crows as a scapegoat to unite the nation and to support her bid for the throne. And so now Fi gets wrapped up in all of this because she helped Prince Jasmine in the first one and because she just wants justice for the crows that are so poorly mistreated. The Merciful Crow, I think, especially talked a lot about like discrimination and different class systems, a lot of classism involved because it is this like caste system and it was a really cool commentary as well as just being a cool fantasy and I, this book lived up to my expectations and that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil my review. But I will probably have a good reads review up at this point if you want to read more about what I thought and I will be wrapping it up at some point. The next book on my TBR, and this is one I have not gotten to yet, but I'll probably start reading this like after I finish this video, is Yona of the Dawn Volume 4. This has been a manga series that I've been slowly reading and manga is just something that I want to get more into because I really enjoy reading it but I never read it as a child where I feel like a lot of people did. Like booktube really introduced me to manga and introduced me to graphic novels and I'm thankful for that because I don't think I would have picked them up if I didn't have some sort of way to be introduced to them. So Yona of the Dawn follows Princess Yona who on her 16th birthday her father is assassinated and so she must escape with her bodyguard to ensure that she is not also assassinated as these other tribes are bidding for the throne and so now she's on a quest to find the four legendary dragon warriors. This like graphic novel series has many volumes but I'm really excited to get into it because I feel like it's a good mix. It's technically so shoujo which is more of like the romancy like cutesy side of manga I guess but it does have shonen elements because it is like an adventure story so I really kind of enjoy that fusion of the two different types of mangas and yeah if you have any good manga recommendations for me please let me know because I'm trying to get more into it and I really want to start reading more of it. Also I just feel like mangas are just like so, there's something about like holding them, they're just like really fun to hold, they're such a cute size, I enjoy it. The next book I'll be reading and I'm about like 20 pages into this one right now is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig and I did end up getting this one last year when I was affiliated with Book of the Month YA and it's this month they were 12 of us. So this is based on the fairy tale of the 12 dancing princesses and last month I read Mexican Gothic which is a horror novel and I would never typically go for a horror novel but I read it and I loved it and I'm like I think I need things that are a little bit more creepy because I'm starting to realize that while I may not like creepy like movies and stuff like that I think I really enjoy it in books so this kind of has this creepy vibe to it and when I made my booktube's favorite books of 2019 video which in which i just got a bunch of booktubers to participate and send me in a clip talking about their favorite book this one is actually the book that had the most people say it was their favorite which surprised me because i didn't think that was going to be the case i yeah i really need to read it and that's also it's one of the people that sent in that it was their favorite book is my dear friend keely and you know i want to read one of her favorites so this follows the tomas family which has 12 children, all girls, they're known as the Thomas Dozen, and they live in this secluded manor by the sea. Once there were 12 sisters, but four of them have met their deaths in increasingly tragic ways. A plague, a fall, a apparent suicide, and a slippery plunge. And now there's whispers in the surrounding villages that the sisters and the family are cursed. So Anale is then disturbed by, by a series of ghostly visions and the more that she suffers from these visions, the more that she thinks that it may just not be coincidence that four of her sisters have died. The girls have been sneaking out every night to glittery balls, dancing until dawn with silk gowns and glittery slippers, but Anale doesn't know whether to join them or to forbid them from going because what are they really dancing with? And when Anale's involvement with a stranger who has secrets of his own intensifies, it's a race to unravel what has happened with her family before she is next. Yeah, um, so far the 20 pages that I've read are really good. I'm already getting such creepy vibes from this and I just also, I put on an ocean ASMR room while I was reading this and it was the move. I was just like in the vibe of it and I really hope that I enjoy this one because I am just really in the mood for it and like this is a book that had not been on my radar for such a long time like it came out last summer and I kind of forgot about it for a while and then I just saw it on my shelf and I was like you want to know what I think it's time to read it so I kind of love when that happens and I hope that I reach for more books on my shelf that I haven't thought about for a while that are have been there for a while and kind of work my way through 
my physical TBR. So the next book that I am going to read is a book from my library because I've been trying to utilize my Kindle more and reading from my library and I've been looking at the ebook selection and so some of my holds have started to come through and the one that has just come through is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo and this is a story told in verse which I don't think I've read a novel in verse in a very very long time if ever I think I maybe read one like in middle school it's been a while and so uh, this week I will be starting with Club when you land and this is a story of this is a story centering around a plane crash of a plane that was on its way to the Dominican Republic and what happens is this man was on this flight and he has two families one in America and one in the Dominican Republic and so his two daughters find out about each other through this tragedy and it's their story of like connecting over their shared grief and like also the fact that they find out that their father had another family so i'm really interested to see it because i think it's going to be a very impactful story and i think that the verse is going to lend to the emotional impact and i've heard great things about her writing so i'm hoping that i will enjoy it and i'll be starting that one soon then the next book that i'm looking forward to reading is the damned by renee adier which is the sequel to the beautiful this is another story that i'll be reading electronically but I have been meaning to read it ever since it came out in July and I just like was kind of all over the place in July but now I'm really trying to work my way through a lot of my arcs and electronic copies that I have on my Kindle um trying to utilize that more as a tool and trying to not be like because I, I, I love reading physically but like it's not possible for the amount of books that I like want to read and the amount of space that I have so I'm trying to like find my love of reading on both like ways and the beautiful is a book that I read via arc last year the Beautiful is about Celine Rosseo who escapes from Paris in the 1870s and heads to New Orleans and there she gets drawn into the glittering nightlife of the Court of Lions where magic seems like it is real and she is drawn further and further into the enigmatic leader of the Court of Lions, Sebastian St. Germain's sphere of interest um, and the two find themselves constantly drawn to each other but as a string of dark murders plagues new orleans celine finds that she may be next and she needs to discover what is going on before her life is forfeit and it's a vampire book but it's like a very subtle vampire book a lot of murder it's fun i'm really excited to read the sequel because it ended on a big cliffhanger with a trope that sometimes i'm a fan of sometimes i'm not and it's actually a trope that i haven't seen used in a while so i'm really interested to see like how renee adier pulls it off in the sequel and it's just full of like very decadent and beautiful writing and so i'm so excited to get to it and i will probably hopefully start that one this week too after i finish clap when you land the next book that i want to read after that is vicious spirits by kat cho which is the sequel to wicked fox and oh my goodness i loved wicked fox when i read it last year so this is an urban fantasy set in modern day Seoul and we follow Mi Young who is a Gumi Ho aka a nine-tailed fox who eats the souls of Ben to survive. However, she's only half Gumi Ho so her human morals kind of tear her from the inside and she tries to only like eat the souls of men that are bad. However, during a run-in with a goblin in the woods, she crosses path with Ji Hoon who is a young boy in her grade at school and so and they find themselves constantly drawn to one another. And, however, during this run with the goblin, Mi Young loses her Gumiho bead, and, which is the life force of a Gumiho, and so she must find a way to get it back before the next full moon, otherwise she will die. And as this is going on, her and Ji Hoon are just drawn closer and closer together. And I loved it a lot. It incorporated a lot of K-drama, uh, tropes which I haven't watched too many K-dramas I do want to watch more but it's just like very dramatic very fast-paced very fun it focused a lot on the familiar relationships which I really loved and I felt like I got to learn more about Korean culture through reading this book which is always fun um, there's this glossary in the back that has a lot of the common terms and so I just like really appreciate when authors do that because I feel like I'm able to learn while I read and i mean there doesn't have to be a glossary in the back of a book either for me to learn about it because if a culture isn't written into a book and i see something that i don't know i try to google it and it's just a really fun way for me to learn because it's wrapped up in this fun story so anyways so that was wicked box but now vicious spirits which is coming out the day that this is posted so hopefully i will be getting my book in the mail and this is a companion novel so it's not I guess directly a sequel. I think we're focusing more on 
Junu, who is Mi Young and Ji Hoon's like frenemy, and he's this goblin, but a handsome goblin. And it's the story of you know what's gonna happen to Mi Young after the events of the Wicked Fox because she is getting sicker and sicker by the day, and no one really knows how to help her. So. Yes, but I'm just, I feel like it's just gonna be so much fun and I'm just gonna adore it and I can't wait to read it. <laughs> oh, and also fun fact, I'm sending this copy to Isabella because I <laughs> wanted to get a copy of Wicked Fox like in its normal size so it would match Vicious Spirits on the shelves because I'm, I'm just like that. But now she gets my annotated copy so I just like really love passing along books to friends. I just do. Uh, yeah, but like before I, I give it to her, I'm going to like sit down and transfer all of my annotations over to my other copy, so that'll be fun. And I have one last book for my TBR this month, and I think that this will be like just what I'm about able to get to by the end of August, and that is going to be The Crow Rider by Kaylin Joseph, which is the sequel to the Storm Crow and I got this book last year because I just like loved this first edition print that they had. Also like something about this book like physically like the pages just like feel really nice. I don't know it just like felt really nice to read. Something about sometimes when like a book just has like a really cool like feel to it you know. Um, so this is about a tropical kingdom called Rodare where elemental, crow elemental crows are part of everyday life and then um, the Aleutian Empire invades and kills all the crows and now we have Princess Thea is in a terrible depression and her sister Kaliza is taking over the throne but like all Thea can do is just like think of the events of what happens and she just has like a lot of emotional baggage from that. Um, and I, I really appreciated this book for how it kind of incorporated a character that was dealing with a mental illness into a fantasy world because I think so often the events of fantasy novels are life-changing, horrible, and of course there are emotional consequences and so I, this book really explored that with Thea. However, the next thing that happens is that when Kaliza is forced to agree to a marriage between Thea and the crown prince of Alucia, which is the empire that literally destroyed them. Thea is finally spurred into action, this kind of brings her back to life, and when she finds a hidden crow egg, they devise, they devise like a dangerous plan to bring this crow back to life in secret. And following the end, the events of this book, we now get the conclusion of this duology and when we get to see Thea like come more into her own and become this badass princess and I think it's just like a really fun YA book and I love the books that have like bonds between humans and animals and yeah I just again I'm trying to kind of like go through my backlist of arcs that I have on my kindle and I really enjoyed this first book so I think I am going to like the second one as well. So there you have it that is my TBR for August. I have kind of missed making TBR videos and sticking to my TBRs. I'm like somewhat good about sticking to them but I feel like because now I'm making this at a point where I feel like I'm going to be reading these books in like the next few weeks that like I will hopefully like really stick to it. I just feel like they're a really good way because sometimes I get just so overwhelmed with the amount of books in the world and the amount of books that I want to read all at once that having a TBR kind of like helps me get my head straight where I'm like okay there's a lot of books that I want to read what are the books that I can realistically read in this next time period and so yeah that's why I just really enjoy making TBRs and if you don't stick to them like who cares but it is kind of fun to try and be organized with yourself so that's all thank you for watching if you've read any of these books and you have any thoughts on them or you just like want to share your thoughts in general um please leave a comment I love reading comments I love subscribe uh replying to comments so please let me know what you think and have some fun read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one that's to do my book stack it's such a small book stack compared to like what I usually have you know because most of them are on my kindle so it's a change but you know, I, it's easier to hold, like, I don't have to, you know, think I'm gonna drop them everywhere. Like, I can actually balance them on my hand. It's great. Sometimes I'm like, what can I do to make this different? But then I just do the same thing, hold books and smile.